I would bet that you are not studying anywhere nearly as effectively as you could be. And why should you care? Well, if you study more effectively, you can learn more and retain more in less time. That translates to less time studying, better grades, and more time doing the things you actually enjoy. In this video, we'll cover all the study hacks I learned in medical school and what I wish I knew back in college. What's going on guys? Dr. Jabal, MedSchoolInsiders.com. This video is an updated version of my first ever video, Pre-Med Study Strategies, What I Wish I Knew in College. By following the tips in this video, you'll be studying less and earning better grades immediately. I just wish I was studying like this sooner. Without further ado, let's get to it. First, active versus passive learning. The default studying pattern we all employ is passive learning. It's easier, requires less effort, and overall, it's just more comfortable. Active learning is more challenging, it's less comfortable, but it's much more effective. There are four steps we must address to actually use active learning. Steps one and two are about obtaining the information, and steps three and four are about reviewing and reinforcing the information. The first step is to identify what is important. Not all information is created equal. To employ active learning, you must constantly be sorting information and assessing its relative importance. Second, organize the information in a way that you understand. Again, as an active process, this isn't going to be just copying and regurgitating the information. Instead, you're going to be doing the difficult task of synthesizing the information in your own words, in diagrams, or in other study aids. For example, I love creating tables and charts. Let's say I was comparing macro minerals like sodium, potassium, and chloride in the GI system. I would take the extra time and effort to extract the relevant information and organize it in a chart format. The process of creating this chart was enough to improve my understanding of the concepts, and now I also had an excellent study tool to review at a later date. Number three, memorize. You need to memorize the information in an active way. I'll get to how to do that later. And lastly, apply the information. You can do practice questions from the textbook or online services. Old practice tests or practice quizzes from your professor are also fantastic resources. Next, let's talk about your studying environment. This is an area requiring more personalization, so it's key that you figure out what works best for you. First, the location. Do you prefer coffee shops and libraries or studying at home? If you've seen the video of my workspace, then you understand why I love studying at home. Many people do, however, get easily distracted at home, and that's why they prefer the coffee shop or library since it helps them focus on the work at hand. Next, group versus solo studying. Are you studying by yourself or with other people? My split varied, but it was roughly 50-50, maybe a little bit more time studying solo. In group study, the rate of reviewing material is slower, but the main benefit is working through and reinforcing difficult concepts while also keeping you motivated and sane. That being said, groups need to be small. Study with only one or two other people. Groups larger than this have severely diminishing returns because you are going to get distracted and your productivity will plummet. One of the biggest advantages to group study is the ability to teach what you have learned. This teaching reinforces the material for yourself and you also help out your friends and classmates. I go over how to use this strategy in my Feynman Technique video. Now there is a trade-off between novel stimuli and maintaining a routine. Novel stimuli such as varying your study location has been demonstrated to improve recall and retention. However, for some this works directly against the benefits of a routine. The routine of waking up at the same time, studying in the same place, etc. may facilitate productivity and fight off procrastination. The novel stimuli of studying in new locations and with new people may impede your ability to get into the groove and maintain productivity long term. I found myself studying in usually the same spaces. Either I was in my med school in the empty classrooms, which is when I usually did group study, or I was at home studying solo with my optimal setup. Now in terms of timing and pacing, one of my all-time favorite study hacks is the Pomodoro Technique. Essentially, you focus on one task, study in these 25-minute blocks, take 5-minute breaks, and it sounds very simple, but it actually is super effective at fighting procrastination, improving your focus, and maintaining endurance. I go over how you can use it most effectively in my Pomodoro video. Third, let's talk about obtaining the information. Generally, you're going to be obtaining information in one of two ways as a pre-med. Either lecture or textbooks. 
During lecture, most of us follow along with our own copy of the PowerPoint, and we just take notes in the comment section. This is a very passive way of learning. Here are some other options to improve your methods of obtaining information. First, consider writing versus typing your notes. Each, of course, has its pros and cons. Typing is faster, which sounds great initially, but if you type faster, you are able to transcribe what the professor is saying verbatim. That is not good. This, this is a very passive way of taking notes. By writing, you generally write much slower, and therefore you have to emphasize the important information and rephrase and organize it into your own words. Writing in comparison to typing has also been demonstrated to improve recall, possibly due to the increased motor coordination required for writing. When I was in med school, styluses aren't what they are today, and I opted for typing in some classes and writing on paper in others, particularly for my summary sheets, which we'll get to later. But now with the Surface Pro and the iPad Pro with Apple Pencil, you can get the best of both worlds. Check out my video on how to most effectively take notes with the iPad and Apple Pencil. Second, let's talk about lecture versus podcast. Your school may offer audio or video recordings of your lectures, and for me, this worked best. However, there are, of course, distinct advantages to attending lectures in person. For lecture, you have this set routine and you're surrounded by other people who are doing the exact same thing. It helps reduce distraction and encourages you to be engaged in the lecture, at least more so than if you were listening to a podcast at home. You're also able to ask questions in real time. But the podcast, on the other hand, gives you the flexibility to watch whenever you want, meaning you can watch the lecture on your own schedule when you're well-rested and feeling fresh. You can also watch it at increased speeds. I personally opted for 1.5 or 2 times playback speed. Zoning out with slow speaking lectures was a big issue for me, and that's why I love the ability to speed up the podcast, because it helped keep me engaged and focused. That being said, be careful of the temptation of podcasting, because it requires a great deal of discipline to stay on track and not fall behind. If you are the type of student who would procrastinate with podcasting, do yourself a favor and stick to attending lectures instead. Okay, now let's talk about re-watching lectures. This is a total waste of time. I understand the thought process behind it. You want to make sure you didn't miss anything important and you want to reinforce the content, repetition. The problem is that re-watching lectures is extremely passive, even more so than attending it the first time. Your time is better spent reviewing the information, synthesizing it, and doing active learning, questions, flashcards, etc. Do not re-watch the lectures or re-listen to recordings. Use your textbook, other resources, your classmates, or your professor's office hours if you need clarification. Now let's move on to textbooks. I used to highlight my textbooks and read my highlights several times to review prior to exams, but that's obviously a terribly passive way to study. Reviewing your PowerPoint slides or Word documents is also equally ineffective. Instead, make the process as active as you can, even at the time of initial exposure. Using either your computer or notepad, Summarize what you read into your own words. By doing this, you are identifying the important information and organizing it in a way that you will understand. This whole process will ultimately drastically improve your recall during test time. Lastly, let's cover memorization. Memorization is arguably the toughest part of studying, at least for most students. There are a few different methods you can use to memorize information much faster and much more effectively. First, Summary sheets, which some people like to call condensed notes. One of the best ways to memorize is to summarize the information. Let's say you have three pages of notes for one lecture. Condense them into one page by organizing and restructuring the information into smaller chunks. And I don't just mean decreasing the font size, adjusting the margins. I mean actually go through and read your notes carefully and extract the highest yield points and rephrase them again into your own words. This process of condensing alone is a form of active learning, and it will reinforce the material. But now you also have this condensed study resource that you can review at a later date. One of the most powerful ways to memorize information is spaced repetition. We know that repetition is key to memorization. The idea here is that after each review, you can increase the interval between reviews. For example, you are exposed to the information on day zero, then you see it again after 24 hours, then after that, another 72 hours, etc. Instead of reviewing it every day, you only review it right before you're about to forget. To perform space repetition on your own requires a lot of scheduling and it's not feasible. That's why you need to use software like Anki. I have a playlist of tutorials that go over exactly how to use it. 
I recommend that you make your own flashcards within Anki and review them daily. By making your own cards versus just taking someone else's, you are again taking advantage of the active learning process. Reviewing your cards daily is also key because otherwise you won't be taking advantage of the spaced repetition. A big reason why flashcards are so effective is because you're using recall rather than recognition. Recognition shows you the right answer and you tell yourself, oh yeah, I recognize that. Whereas recall requires you to extract the information on the fly, which is ultimately more similar to test day. The beautiful thing about flashcards is you don't have to sit down and spend 30 or 60 minutes at once. To get through all my cards each day, I would just open the Anki app on my phone at any brief moment of downtime. I would go through cards when I was, you know, waiting in line at a restaurant, or getting groceries, or waiting for a friend. In those few minutes, I was able to perform a handful of cards. But this adds up throughout the day. In order to sit down and review one lecture, it's going to take you 20 minutes at least. But if you do a few flashcards, you just need a few minutes. Now, these are all of the strategies that I honed during medical school. If I went deep into each topic, this video would be 10 times the length. If you'd like to know more about memorization, Pomodoro, the Feynman technique, or any other study strategy that I mentioned in this video, there are links down in the description to teach you more. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite study hack is, or if you want me to cover another study strategy in an upcoming video. Thank you all so much for watching, happy studying, good luck, and I will see you guys in that next one.